What's up wizards, today we're going to be looking at TypeScript 5.3, which is a version of TypeScript that's not even remotely released yet. Today or yesterday, I think they released their TypeScript iteration plan, which says what they might work on for this next version. I've written this up into an article on TotalTypeScript.com so you can see exactly what might go in and the stuff that I'm most excited about. Let's start with import attributes. Import attributes are a TC39 proposal that recently reached stage three, and they kind of look like this. They let you specify the type of the thing that you're importing. Important. You can do it with a standard ESM kind of import, or you can do it with a dynamic import. You can re-export a module with a validated type, or you can instantiate a worker with a validated type too. Well, what's the point of this, you might be thinking, because you know what type it is based on the file extension. Like we know this is JSON, and we know this is .js, and we know that this is WASM. Well, the main implication here is security, right? Because you don't really know if you're accessing a remote resource, whether it's the actual MIME type that it says it is. So if you access something that you think is JSON, but it turns out to be JavaScript instead, then it could potentially execute code in an environment that you don't want it to. So what this proposal does is it makes sure that it is what you think it is. It makes sure that it's type of JSON here. This seems really useful. I think it's really good to see these types of language features coming to JavaScript and coming to TypeScript as well. And I think this one will be really useful if you're accessing remote resources, be a must include. This next one I'm really excited about, supporting throw expressions. You might look at this piece of code and go, oh, that should just work in JavaScript, right? You know, we either check if there is a search params ID, and if there isn't, we throw an error saying ID is required. But actually, if you run this through TypeScript, TypeScript says expression expected, because this is not an expression. And so you can't actually do a throw in these types of situations. So there is a proposal which is in stage two at the moment, which will basically bring this to the language. And this is the thing, TypeScript isn't saying we're going to implement this in TypeScript. It's just basically saying we're going to champion the proposal. The proposal has been lying dormant for a little bit and they just want to get it over the line so that they can start implementing it in TypeScript. I really, really like this. I mean, it just feels right. You know what I mean? The best kind of things that you want to add to the language just feel like things that should be done in the language anyway. So I'm really here for this. Next up is a big one. This is isolated declarations. Okay, I'm going to go to the main camera for this. I was lucky enough to go to the Bloomberg offices myself and actually chat to the person who's making this proposal. So he explained to me in all its details. So I'm ready to talk about it. Isolated declarations is all about making monorepos in TypeScript run faster. If you've got a monorepo where you have loads of dependencies and a really deep dependency tree, type checking that can be really slow because package A might depend on package B, which depends on package C, which depends on package D. So you've got to check D, C, B, A in that order and you can't really speed that up in any way. What isolated declarations does is it kind of speeds that process up by making you be a bit stricter in like up this level, so D, C, B. It basically says if you're a little bit stricter, right, if you use Use some explicit return types and I'm not quite sure what they're going to land on in terms of being a bit stricter but if you do things a bit more explicitly then we can actually parallelize all of those so instead of checking DCBA we can just check them all at once and parallelize them across different cores and it also means that you don't actually need to do it in your app itself it's only the packages that your app depends on this means that you can kind of have your normal mode of TypeScript but then use isolated declarations in all of the packages that kind of power your monorepo. I think this is really, really sick, and I'm looking forward to seeing if they actually ship it in this version, because it's quite a big change to TypeScript, but of course it's going to be opt-in via a TS config flag. This next one is really, really cool. They are looking to improve narrowing in generic functions. If you have a function like this called example func, which basically takes in a key of t, which could be foo or bar, and it captures it inside a type argument, so you know which one's captured it, and you're basically returning example t. So the function should return a string if the key is foo, and it should return a number if the key is bar. But as as you can see, we're getting this really weird error here. Type string, this ABC, is not assignable to type never, and the number down here is not assignable to type never. And this is because TypeScript is not very good at narrowing this kind of logic in these settings. And this has been a long-standing problem with generic functions. It makes generics really hard to teach as well, which is why my generics workshop on Total TypeScript is so long and involved and has a lot of caveats around this stuff. In general, the way you want to fix this is by having as never be your type annotation here, which is pretty horrible. 
horrible. And so if they can improve this in 5.3, I would really, really love it. This one is fun. There's like this really famous hack in TypeScript where you basically say, okay, if I want to have an icon size here, where I have small or medium or large, and I want to get autocomplete on the members of that, then I actually need to add this weird little annotation here. This is like one of my most liked tweets ever was just sort of revealing this to people. And like people go crazy for it because if you don't do this, if you just have string by itself, then you lose the autocomplete. But TypeScript, God damn it, it might just sort of like come in and fix this for us and means we can just use string in this position instead of string and empty object, which of course is great. But you know, how am I going to get my clout now? And the final one I'm pretty excited about is fetch in types node. There's like this really like heated, long open issue about this, where because fetch was marked as experimental by node itself, it hasn't been integrated into the types package for it. But hopefully TypeScript is going to come in and investigate it and resolve the issue and just sort of like... I don't know what they're going to do, where they're going to just say, yo, put fetch in, or no, don't put fetch in. But it will be nice to have at least a bow tied on top of this issue so that people who use Node can use fetch as well. And that's it, folks. I'm pretty excited about TypeScript 5.3. I'm always excited for new TypeScript versions, really, because they keep on building on top of the language, and it's such a small, impressive team doing this really, really cool stuff. Thank you so much for joining along. I will have another video. One of these hands will contain a video, and you can watch that video and see more awesome TypeScript stuff. I'm also writing a TypeScript book as well. I'm currently in the planning phase of it, and I'm trying to work out like all the exercises I want to include and sections I want to include. So if you have some ideas of what you want to see in a TypeScript book, it's going to be primarily focused on like beginners, intermediates, application developers. Whereas my sort of total TypeScript stuff, especially the paid course, has been really focused on getting you up into a wizard level. So if you have any ideas for like an intermediate book, I'd love to hear it. But anyway, I'll see you very soon.